Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Did you know that 45% of Bitcoin supply has not moved in six months? This just coming out from the Coin Telegraph. A healthy portion of Bitcoin hodlers refuse to let go of their coins no matter what Bitcoin price action delivers. And guys, we are seeing that right now on the charts. There's basically not enough demand to sell, nor is there enough supply to buy, which is basically giving Bitcoin this range in price. And, uh, you know, as I've said in the past, Bitcoin has been ranging pretty much since, uh, well, I guess depends on when you take this range. It could be uh, end of February or mid-March, depending on where you're taking that measurement from. But this is a good sign, guys. 45% of total supply. So that's nearly half of every single Bitcoin that is in existence has not moved. So here we have it. Nearly half of the available Bitcoin supply has not moved in the past six months. On-chain data has confirmed in the latest edition of this week's newsletter. The week on-chain analytics firm Glassnode shows investors did not sell the top on Bitcoin. So guys, the other thing that means is that investors, at least 45%, let's call it 45% of Bitcoin investors, uh, do not believe that this is a good enough top to sell Bitcoin at. $70,000 is just not going to cut it for them. Uh, Bitcoin may have put in a new all-time high some five months ago, but a large section of the Bitcoin investor base continues to double down on its holdings. Analyzing the realized cap hodl wave indicator, Glassnode reveals that just over 45% of all Bitcoins have remained dormant in their wallets for at least the past half year. Uh, so the last six months since about February uh, I guess we could say mid-February, roughly, that is uh, roughly six months. That would bring us in and around this area in here. So you guys can see that would have been the beginning of that trend before we really just kind of started moving sideways. Despite the record highs, though, and subsequent volatility, a considerable swath of market participants prefer to do nothing because we all kind of have it in our heads what the next move is going to be. All right, if this is not your first bull run, you kind of get it. I know for some people who, uh, you know, maybe this is your first bull run or maybe even it's your second bull run, you still may not have, uh, you know, really kind of figured out what is supposed to happen next, guys. For more information on what I'm doing this bull run, this is, again, my third bull run. You can find me at patreon.com slash working money channel. It is only $5 a month. And over there, I am sharing my entire crypto trading journey with all my uh, with all my Patreon subscribers over there. So patreon.com slash working money channel. You guys can see here, realized cap, hodl waves the bitcoin price is denoted in black here and the hodl waves these colors you guys can see at the tops of bull run so 2018 early 2018 and into 2021 uh the supply did get flush so investors did eventually sell off their bitcoin but guys we have been hodling 45.6 percent has been hodling in and around here so uh we're we're definitely not there yet we're seeing something kind of similar to what we saw back in 2016 2017 a bit of a shelf before a big decline in what I'm assuming will be, uh, you know, the all-time high for Bitcoin, but also when sellers decide to finally sell off their Bitcoin, that would be coming probably into 2025. Long-term hodler entities hodling coins for at least 155 days distributed to the market, both leading up to the all-time high and later on. Uh, here's a quote. We can also assess the seven-day change in LTH, so long-term hodler supply, as a tool to assess rates of change in their aggregate balance. We can see substantial LTH distribution, typical of macro topping formations, into the March all-time high. This coming from Glassnode. So uh, another chart there just to uh, just to kind of give you guys a sense of um, of what they are seeing, the kinds of metrics that they are looking at. So this is long and short term hodl or supply ratio. Um, and I will link this in the description of the video for you guys if you want to take a look even further. Now, Bitcoin is just part of the story, of course. Uh, you know, even if we just look at Bitcoin right now, we have been seeing a bit of bullish momentum here back up over $60,000 per coin. Uh, and it was, you know, it was slowly moving up in the round uh, 59, 60,000. Right now it's at uh, roughly $61,000. Uh, over the last three days, we've seen a bit of bullish momentum to the upside after a few negative days. But again, uh, the overall trend is suggesting that Bitcoin is pushing up. So of course, $70,000 per BTC is that, uh, is that number right now to beat getting up above what we saw fairly recently here, $70,000, a nice even psychological level. Uh, you guys can see here, sentiment is in neutral territory. So that is creeping up slowly too. The market is uh, seeing a bit of green today, 24 hour. Within the last 24 hours, Bitcoin is up 3.85%. Ethereum is up 3.71. We've got BNB coin up 1.45. 
Solana is up 1.49, XRP up 0.81%. Um, so, you know, the numbers, we're not seeing extreme activity. I mean, some coins like Ton is up uh, 14.16, but uh, by and large, we're seeing the majority of the crypto space just kind of slowly creeping back. Market cap is also slowly creeping back at 2.16 trillion. 24-hour uh, volume, that is down by a little bit, 18.88%. Uh, and Bitcoin dominance, again, slowly creeping back up. So Bitcoin dominance is that other thing compared to uh, you know the rest of the market cap. We need to see Bitcoin dominance go down in order for altcoins to go up. And so Bitcoin has just been on a grind to the upside. We haven't seen that uh, significant blow off top for altcoins yet, just because Bitcoin's just been doing this and this and this just kind of creeping up slowly. Eventually though, when it does fall off a cliff, you know that is when altcoin season has engaged. We saw it in 2018 over here. We also saw it in 2021 over here. So, uh, you know, now it's just a matter of time before we see it in 2025 is what I'm assuming. That's when we're going to see the majority of these altcoin gains and probably to the all-time high for Bitcoin. Let's bring up the XRP chart right now. XRP, as of the time of this recording, uh, well, pretty much trading in and around the same place that it was trading yesterday, as you guys can see there, 57.7 on the XRP chart. And uh, today we're at about 57.8, so not too much difference there for XRP. Again, we didn't see a lot of activity for uh, much of the altcoins. They've uh, been remaining relatively stagnant. You know, the month of July was pretty good, but uh, now in August, as I mentioned in uh, yesterday morning's video, if you guys didn't catch that, I will link it up here in the top right-hand corner. Uh, near the beginning of the video, I was talking a little bit about, or I think it was yesterday, it could have been the day before, but I think it was yesterday's video where I was saying, how uh, August and September generally in crypto are red months. And um, I mean, I guess we're going to see for 2024 what's going to happen next. But by and large, uh, everything is moving smoothly. I would be uh, letting you guys know if I did see any anomalies on the charts. Anyway, going to keep moving along, guys. John Deaton did put out this alert. Apparently, Elizabeth Warren has just sent out a text message saying the following. Can you believe this? Listen to this. It's Elizabeth Warren. We recently found out that a super PAC supporting my Republican opponent, a crypto lawyer from Rhode Island recruited to run against me, raked in $2 million from three massive donations from two crypto billionaires and one big crypto firm. It's absolutely critical we respond to this super PAC's fundraising with a strong surge of support. Well, John Dean did come out responding to this. Dear Senator Warren, I know how you disfavor the truth, but the only time I've been recruited to do anything in Massachusetts was to serve my country in the USMC. Boom. I'll see you soon, Senator. Please help me keep the pressure on Elizabeth Warren. She's worried for a reason and desperately trying to outraise me. You can help prevent that from happening by donating even a small amount to johndeatonforsenate.com. And uh, guys, I'm going to link John Deaton's uh, website in the description of this video. If you want crypto to remain free in the United States, John Deaton is, uh, well, a guy that you can trust uh, that can be a seat at the table that can uh, help do just that. Let's shake up Washington, he says. You can donate a set amount, a custom amount, or you can even donate cryptocurrency to John Deaton. Eaton's campaign. The United States cannot be left behind, will not be left behind. How Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP threaten the trust industry. This courtesy of Good Morning Crypto, guys. This is an interview with uh, Mark Yusko. He was interviewed with Johnny Crypto here. Listen to this. So it's going to be trillions and trillions, $700 trillion of assets. Well, why does that matter? Well, the trust industry takes about 6 to 8% of global GDP to make it work. Lawyers fees, accountants fees, auditing fees, bank fees, settlement fees, all kinds of fees. And the bankers love those fees because that's their revenues. So why do they hate Bitcoin? Why do they hate Ethereum? Why do they hate XRP? Because it displaces the need for trust because we have truth. And that truth in a decentralized world running on computers that manage themselves through block rewards, we don't need the banking system anymore. I think the bankers have pretty much figured this out with Ripple and XRP. I don't know so much with Bitcoin and Ethereum, how uh, integrated these two cryptocurrencies are going to be with institutional grade finance. Uh, I mean, maybe Ethereum, the verdict's still out on Bitcoin though. XRP though, for sure, 
has been threatening the banking sector for many years now. This is the talking point that uh, is now sticking. And, uh, you know, it's not just Ripple and XRP. At the beginning of this journey, it used to be just one company that was taking on, uh, well, big banks. Okay, cross-border payments. We know it's Ripple, cross-border payments. There are so many other applications now, so many other crypto firms that have come into their own over the last few years that are not just challenging, uh, you know, traditional banking models, but challenging various different sectors uh, globally. So wanted to thank Good Morning Crypto for that. One of those cryptocurrency companies, again, guys, is VC. And this one, courtesy of Colin Brown here, a scholarly paper was just put out by Abel Liddy. Explore how VeChain is pioneering in blockchain to secure supply chains. Abil Liddy's new preprint reveals how blockchain tech like VeChain enhances transparency, reduces fraud, and ensures product integrity in trade finance operations. You guys can find the paper. Uh, it is linked here. So you can download it there. I was just going to read uh, some of this for you guys. Blockchain technology for supply chain finance. Now you got to remember, VeChain is another one of those cryptocurrencies part of my legacy portfolio, but also part of the $15,000 plus portfolio that you guys can find over there at uh, patreon.com slash working money channel. One of these cryptocurrencies that performs very well when all coins do rally. You can see it here. It did uh, explode in price during the last bull run. And, uh, you know, the volatility here really gives it uh, opportunity to move in a spec market. But guys, it's not just about the spec market. Of course, it is all about the real world utility. And this is a paper just uh, a paper just released a few days ago, August the 7th, 2024, discussing VeChain in terms of, uh, well, a real world solution for supply chain finance specifically. Blockchain technology has emerged as a transformative force in supply chain finance, promising to enhance transparency, security, and efficiency in trade finance operations. This paper explores the integration of blockchain within supply chain finance, focusing on its potential to address key challenges such as fraud, inefficiency, and lack of visibility. So, uh, you know, traditionally, supply chain management was, uh, you know, basically an endeavor that was conducted, a manual endeavor, and, uh, you know, there could be human error along the supply chain. But with blockchain, now there is the uh, ability to track uh, goods in real time. It's on the blockchain, obviously. The uh, room for error is very, very minute. Uh, and so you compare this to what uh, used to occur back, uh, you know, 10, 20 years ago. Very, very different. VeChain uh, is a company that came out of China. China's number one, I don't know if you guys know this, but China's number one export are counterfeited goods. Yes, <laughs> China, the king of counterfeiting. And so the people over at VeChain realized, you know, they saw a problem there. The government of, Ch of China is also having a problem with this. So they said, okay, let's put supply chain management on the blockchain so that we can now trace goods from its inception, from source, all the way to the final user. And uh, this is what VeChain did uh, initially work on. Now they're branching out and working on many different things. So here it says, this paper explores the integration of blockchain with chain finance, focusing on its potential to address key challenges such as fraud, inefficiency, and lack of visibility. As I said, by leveraging decentralized ledgers and smart contracts, blockchain enables real time tracking of goods and financial transactions, thereby improving the accuracy and reliability of data. The paper examines case studies and pilot projects demonstrating uh, blockchain's impact on reducing operational costs, streamlining processes, and increasing trust among, uh, among stakeholders. Furthermore, it discusses the implications of blockchain technology for regulatory compliance and risk management, highlighting its role in fostering a more secure and transparent trade finance ecosystem. The findings suggest that blockchain has the potential to revolutionize supply chain finance by creating a more accountable and efficient system, ultimately contributing to the growth and resilience of global trade. So that is just, uh, you know, one, that's just the abstract here. I will link this uh, in the description of the video, or rather you can get it there from uh, Colin Brown's original tweet here. A very interesting report here, specifically revolving around VeChain and their move uh, towards supply chain improvement. Uh, they talk a little bit about AI, how that is uh, impacting and improving the, uh, the industry too. Uh, a very interesting read here, guys. You know, blockchain technology, this is becoming a key talking point. Uh, you know, we know that it is going to shake up an industry. And we also know we need politicians that are crypto forward uh, to help improve our industry, to help improve every industry, really. Uh, if we do, in fact, see crypto technology, blockchain, DLT, whatever it is, uh, permeate more industries as the years go on. Luckily, for the USA, guys, James K. Finland brought this up. For your information, this is coming from Bloomberg Crypto. The outcome of the Ripple SEC case could help shape the future of other crypto battles. Uh, you know, lucky for us, this is the case because 
at a point I feel like we were not so confident, but there are ripple effects. One of the most watched legal cases in crypto reached a major milestone last week when a federal judge ordered Ripple to pay $125 million in civil penalties. We know the outcome. That was positive for us. Uh, we know the history there. But here's what Phelan is noticing. The lawsuit rallied the greater crypto industry around XRP. More than a dozen advocacy groups, including the uh, the Chamber of Digital, whoops, let's go back up there, the Chamber of Digital Commerce and a blockchain association wrote to U.S. District Judge Annalisa Torres in support of Ripple's position. Uh, since then, the SEC has launched enforcement action against a number of other crypto firms, including Terraform and Binance Holdings, Coinbase, etc., but guys, the SEC did eventually lose against XRP uh, because of antiquated law. You can't really use the Howey test to classify cryptocurrencies, and they're finding that out now. Uh, of course, in, in July of last year, Doris did find XRP was a security when sold to institutional investors, but not to the general public. So that was the key differentiator there. The decision was widely viewed by the industry as a victory. Uh, and of course, you know, now trading XRP, not a security, that is positive for you and I, who have been holding it since before this lawsuit. Well, at least I have been holding it since before this lawsuit even started. Even Stuart Alderati said in a phone interview uh, that the company respects the ruling and can pay the penalty off of our balance sheet with cash. And so we're glad to have this finally behind us. But now, guys, now there's still more crypto legal battles. The SEC could challenge the judge's decision on appeal, but the outcome would already be helping to shape the future of crypto legal cases. So even if the SEC does appeal, Bloomberg is noting that this crypto case is going to be important for future crypto cases in the United States specifically. Bloomberg intelligence analyst uh, Elliot Stein said Torres's latest decision bodes well for Coinbase Global in its battle against the agency and could boost its odds of a favorable decision in that case. So that is positive news. So this is making waves. This case uh, is being propped up as, uh, I guess, the quintessential case to be looking at right now for crypto rulings in the U.S. And considering there are so many other uh, entangled battles against the SEC, guys, we at least have clarity and this could help. Well, I mean, the entire crypto industry moving forward. So I wanted to thank James for that. Crypto Eddie also bringing this to our attention, guys. August the 9th, 2024. Bitnomial Exchange LLC submitted a self-certification to the Commodity Futures Trading Commission for the listing of an XRP US dollar futures contract. So that is now going to be called the XUS. Guys, this is the latest news here. Because XRP has that clarity, now it's looking like institutions want to delve in. So these contracts are set to begin trading on or after August the 13th. Uh, today is the 14th. If you guys are watching this video on the day that I'm releasing it, the XUS contract is a physically settled futures contract based on 100,000 XRP with specific rules added to the Bitnomial rulebook to govern its trading and settlement. The XRP Ledger, an open source decentralized blockchain, serves as a foundation for XRP, which is primarily used for transactions and computational services. As of August of 2024, there are about 60.86 billion XRP in circulation. The XUS contracts will be subject to various core principles set by the CFTC, including compliance with rules, prevention of market distribution, position limits and transparency. Bitnomial has ensured that these contracts meet regulatory requirements uh, and that they provide a detailed information about the product spe uh, specifications, training rules, and settlement procedures. So the beginning, guys, this is the beginning of XRP tied products in the financial market in institutional finance. XRP is not just trading to retail anymore. The exchange has received support from market participants and clearing members, and no significant opposition to the listing of these contracts have been reported. All related rules and information will be made available on the Bitnomial website, and you guys can find that website there. I will link this tweet in the description of the video. This is positive news. I've been seeing this all over the place. So XRP futures contracts have now been filed with the CFTC and Bitnomial. Uh, I guess they're fairly confident that uh, they're going to move forward with this. A massive step forward for an XRP ETF launching in the United States. So that's the other thing. If we get futures contracts, it's looking as though that could lead to the path of an ETF. Here's the official filing from Bitnomial, uh, listing of XRP US dollars futures contracts. So you guys can see it there. Uh, they give an XRP market overview, basically what it is, and then uh, some XRP price history there. But if you go to the chart, I think we can figure all that out for ourselves. Chad Steingraber here also bringing this up. Okay, so Bitnomial became the first crypto native exchange to be granted a full set of CFTC derivatives licenses back in December of 2023. So for those of you guys who did not know, uh, just a little bit on Bitnomial, the clearinghouse license, the DCO, completes Bitnomial's set of licenses 
a rare achievement that already includes the exchange license DCM and a brokerage license and FCM allowing Bitnomial to cater to the unique needs of digital asset traders, brokers, and dealers across the entire derivatives industry, all under the federal oversight of the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. So they are fully licensed, ready to go in the United States specifically. And now, guys, they are looking to add a U.S. dollar futures contract for XRP. Boom goes the dynamite. This is not just great for institutional traders. This is amazing for current XRP holders who purchased at the prices we purchased at. Bill Morgan saying this too. Uh, it is interesting to consider some information disclosed by Bitnomial in its submission to the SEC. Okay, on average, the monthly XRP trade is over 85 billion on XRP cash markets. Bitnomial proposes a spot month position limit of 300 million XRP or 300, or sorry, 3,000 XRP futures contract equivalents. It states this represents about 0.049% of total deliverable supply. 300 million XRP is about what Ripple uses uh, from the monthly escrow release. Uh, so that is uh, less than 0.05%. Another blow to Ripple's dump FUD narrative. Clearly 61% of XRP is in circulation. And Bitnomial has a US clearinghouse license, which, uh, which we already talked about earlier on. So think of all the XRP now that needs to be purchased up for this. The other thing that uh, Cowboy Crypto pointed out here, some things come full circle. Very, very interesting note here. Jay Clayton's Electric Capital happens to be an investor in Bitnomial, uh, Bitnomial, Bitnomial, who is launching an XRP futures contract. Jay Clayton sued Ripple on the last day as acting SEC chairman and now advises Electric Capital's founders through the regulatory landscape. Things that make you go, hmm, now that it's regulated, well, look who's jumping on board here. Uh, and you guys can see Electric Capital, part of Bitnomial's crew there. So Jay Clayton now associated with a potential XRP futures contract listed on Bitnomial. The amount of inflow coming into XRP is going to be wild. As per Bill's statement here, you got to think as more of these institutional products come online, they're going to need to be backed by real XRP. And at 58 cents per coin, I'm feeling like the institutions are likely to load up now for future launches of some of these products. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.